We're in the money. Cruelty Squad is the kind of game that feels like it came out of a bad acid trip combined with salmonella induced food poisoning, and I mean that as an absolute compliment. The point I knew I'd become addicted to Cruelty Squad was when I realized that I was fishing in a sewer. You see, one of the main money making mechanics in this game is fishing, there's even a stock market where fishes go up or down in value. Anyway, at one point I had what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity, where I suddenly realized I was sitting in a sewer in a video game catching ugly mutated looking fish to make money off the in-game stock market. Also, I could buy an intestinal grappling hook just to be able to kill a governor at somewhere called the Kansas City Mega Mall. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Yep, welcome to Cruelty Squad, also known as my brain has fallen and it can't get up. Now, there's been a lot of weird gatekeeping around this thing online as if it's some kind of super intelligent, deep and multi-layered masterpiece that few people are actually able to comprehend or understand. I definitely think a big thing that's probably turned off a lot of people is the way the game looks. It goes for this purposefully trashy aesthetic, but beauty as they say is only skin deep, or is that more don't judge a book by its cover? Either way though, I can kind of understand that because that's what originally turned me off playing this thing too. And to put it into perspective, the first time I died in this game was when I threw a toilet and the ensuing gas cloud that it left behind after exploding happened to kill me. There's shit everywhere! There's also deliberate traps just designed to mess with the player's head, along with it just being crushingly difficult and obscure most of the time. And look, if someone wanted to stop playing at any point there, that'd be perfectly understandable. But they would be missing out, I think, on one of 2021's most unique games, and also one of the most effortlessly unique games too. Cruelty Squad looks like what happens when you try to run a 30-year-old game on a modern PC, and none of the textures load in properly, and the music doesn't play correctly. Yeah, the music in this thing, my god, some of these tracks are going to be burned into my brain for the rest of my life. <laughs> Looks like an old GeoCities website in motion. It looks like someone took a Windows 95 desktop theme and converted it into a video game. Taking assets from 3D Movie Maker and creating a world where clip art goes when it dies. Yeah, this is a pretty unique looking game and as you get deeper and deeper into what it offers, you're gonna see some serious shit. But I think the most important takeaway is that Cruelty Squad is still generally pretty good and addictive once you push through that initial period of sheer confusion and that deliberate lack of handholding. This is where you take the red pill and you see how far this polluted rabbit hole goes, because at this point, it opens up faster than your mum's legs do after a couple of dirty martinis. I try to keep a low profile. On the surface, it looks like an LSD nightmare, and it still is in a lot of ways. It wasn't until I'd played for about five or six hours that I even found out that those borders around the screen indicate what difficulty mode you're playing on. But outside of its presentation, it is a pretty simple game on the surface. It's described as an immersive sim, which is mostly true, but I'd more compare it to Deus Ex with better shooting and more of a focus on combat. There's not really any stealth in the game outside of just being able to lean around corners and get away with killing people with silenced weapons until you're detected. You can interact with elements in the environment like vending machines, slot machines and trash cans, but it's never necessary to proceed. You're not going to be hacking into computer systems and clearing out someone's bank account or having meaningful conversations with NPCs that are going to affect the outcome of the story. Oh my god, daddy! What a shame. You're not even punished for taking a lethal approach either with your targets, and it doesn't really seem to matter either if you go around murdering these innocent NPCs. In this, you're playing as a mercenary who kind of looks like Dennis Rodman from Double Team, living in a world made of garbage, what we call in Australia, Western Sydney carrying out hit contracts for this huge conglomerate that employs you. Given your basic objectives by this guy, who kind of looks like Slimer from Ghostbusters wearing a baseball cap. There's 13 main missions in the game, all sending you to a different location to kill off your targets. And while the concept itself might be simple, Cruelty Squad really just hands you the keys to the toy box and lets you go wild. About the only hand holding you're given is that you can see a red crosshair indicating where your target is on the mission, but that's about it. Although you begin with only a pretty basic silenced pistol, there's upwards of a couple dozen weapons throughout the entire game, most of which you're going to have to find and unlock. There's shotguns, submachine guns, sniper rifles, a rocket launcher, or how about a gun that turns an enemy inside out, leaving behind nothing but their inverted body parts, which looks like a prolapsed anus. I doubt anyone's going to find all of these on their own either, and even after I'd finished all of these main missions, I still had a whole heap of them left to unlock. 
Surprisingly to the shooting, it ain't all that bad. Enemies move around erratically, but they also go down easily with a headshot. So it's serviceable outside of a couple of really annoying enemies. One of them literally being a rat that poisons you because that's fun. And then a giant golem thing that survives like a bazillion bullets to its face. About the only thing I don't like here is how you've got to reload by pulling the mouse downwards. Which just kind of feels clunky during combat, but I think overall it's a pretty solid system. I mean, even the basic shotgun in this is pretty fun to use. The weapons feel like they do enough damage relative to what they're based off, so an LMG or a fast-firing automatic rifle shreds through enemies like a pisshead shreds through a late-night kebab, as it should. And a rocket launcher does a great job at turning a room full of NPCs into a room full of blood puddles and severed body parts. Then you've got all of the equipment and these implants, and this is where it basically turns into deus ex meets body horror. With all these little icons for all of these abilities that look like they were made by someone in MS Paint. These are pretty standard upgrades in terms of how they affect the gameplay. You got things like double jumping called gunk boosters, which puts holes in the bottom of your feet that shits out toxic waste whenever you use it. No, seriously. You've got a med kit, there's grenades, night vision goggles, goggles that highlight NPCs through walls, or how about the nightmare goggles? Which don't seem to do much more than make it look like you're seeing the world through Satan's butthole. You can improve your legs to increase the jump height too, to the point that you can leap tall buildings in a single bound. Just with the downside to that being some pretty epic fall damage. Oh yeah man, the fall damage in this game is insane. I mean, for a character who can be customized in so many ways, it is a bit annoying that he's got some of the most fragile ankles in all of gaming. There is an implant that removes fall damage, but it takes up the same slot as body armor does. So, do you keep it on and jump around like a complete asshole, or swap it out for something like the armor to make yourself more resilient? Well, these are the kind of hard-hitting decisions that Cruelty Squad forces the player to make from mission to mission. The more protection armor offers though, the more it also slows down your movement speed, and on top of that, different weapons weigh more than others, making you move even slower. And I swear the devs put two armor pieces in here just to mess with the player. For these two armor pieces in the game that offer up the most protection and don't slow you down, one of them severely inhibits your vision with these fleshy walls on each side of the screen. And if there's a better representation of what being born might look like in a video game, well, I've yet to see it. And then the other one replaces your hands with these large balls and prevents you from using any weapons. And all I can say in regards to both of those is, well, fuck. I think the most useful implant is definitely the grappling hook, which is supposed to be your intestines, but to me it looks more like an umbilical cord. It even has its own physics, bouncing you up and down and launching you up into the air if you time the release just right. This is an implant that I think is almost essential, and it puts into contrast just how needless some of the rest of them are. Like, I didn't even use some of the grenade types, and I didn't even bother with things like the stealth suit or the camouflage. Jumping implants just makes traversal so much easier, and they really are just kind of objectively useful in pretty much every mission. The reason for that, I think, is that verticality is the most important factor in the entire game. The amount of vents or hidden entrances on roofs or the side of buildings is just too many to count. I do kind of wish the game didn't limit you to a single upgrade per body part. You can only have one implant active at once on either your head, chest, arms, or legs. And really being able to break the game here by stacking them up would have made this whole thing much more deranged and out of control. I feel too like a lot of the missions are more like mini puzzles waiting to be solved. With some of these you can pretty much just walk right in, find your target and cap them in the head before running to the exit point and calling it a day. But some of the later missions are way more challenging and almost kind of seem insurmountable at first. Like, take this one for instance, right, in these toxic swamps called Bog Business. At first, this just seems needlessly difficult. You're surrounded by all of this liquid that instantly poisons you the moment you touch it, kind of like G-Fuel energy drinks. But then you realize, at all of these conveniently placed islands, there's berries you can eat that instantly cure you from this toxic effect. And if you take advantage of the bunny hopping and strafe jumping to get across this water faster and only eat these things as they're needed, you can get across this first area pretty easily. Even more than that though, there's a hazmat suit upgrade hidden on this level that makes you immune to this effect entirely. You've got two different routes here to get to your target, both of which are perfectly fine to take. And to make sure people don't just snipe this guy from the other side of the map, the view distance is also purposefully reduced with the fog. So what initially seems like something put together to just kind of dick around with the player and seems frustrating without any kind of reprieve actually has some sensible workarounds once you take the time to figure it out. It's never just about playing a level once and never touching it again. I mean, you can do that if you really want to, but there's always a better or smarter way you can go about getting things done. Like all things worth spending time on, like calligraphy, woodcrafting, doing blow or masturbating, you get out what you put in. 
One of the first missions I really got filtered on was one of the earliest ones in a shopping mall, where I had to kill a governor who was making an appearance there, and I just couldn't get to this guy without pissing off these 9 foot tall enemies carrying around dual machine guns. To make it even trickier, he's hiding behind bulletproof glass like he's the Pope or something. After a while though, I realised there was a wall I could break through, which then led to a balcony on the upper floor where I could kill him safely. And then even after that, I figured out I could use the grappling hook and the jumping implant to bypass that whole area entirely. Some of this stuff you're not going to find on your first attempt, like hidden walls that are pretty much impossible to spot unless you know exactly where to look. But then again, that's kind of what's so fun about this. Going back after you've figured all of this stuff out and trying to do it as quickly as possible, or even better, coming back with new upgrades and finding an even easier way of getting the whole thing done. Making all of this possible is only done through implants though, and buying all of this stuff is a combination of having enough cash and finding them in the missions, mostly just having enough cash. And on that note, Cruelty Squad does have a bit of a weird approach to money. You get basic cash from finishing missions, along with doing sponsored videos for mobile apps like Raid Shadow Legends, but that's only around a few thousand bucks each time, and some of these upgrades can run upwards of tens of thousands of dollars, and ain't nobody got time for that. So what do you do? Well, you play that stock market. We're in the money. At all times, there's this stock market going on in the background, where the value of all of these different companies, along with fish and even body parts, goes up and down in real time. Yeah, body parts. If you're playing on the right difficulty mode, you can harvest the organs of people you kill throughout the game. Then on top of that, certain stocks are going to skyrocket or even crash during specific missions, so it's actually a pretty deep and extensive mechanic. Not to mention, it's just fun dicking around with it. I mean, I'm not going to make money off stocks in real life anytime soon, but you better believe me that I made a killing selling off the organs of the people who fucked with me in this game. The thing is though, once you've gotten all the upgrades you need, there's really no need for cash anymore. It goes from being this highly sought after resource to being completely needless. Think about the most expensive thing you'll need to buy is one of the secret missions, which costs about a million bucks, and after that I forgot it existed. Now, Cruelty Squad won't take long for a first playthrough, and you can blaze through each main mission pretty quickly, but going back and unlocking all of the weapons and implants, not to mention finding all of these hidden missions, well, that's going to take you a hell of a lot longer. And if the main missions are like falling down a rabbit hole, well, then these secret ones are like heading into another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You've just crossed over into the cruelty zone. Yeah, and that's a reference none of my viewers are going to get. What a shame. About the only thing I think I'm still not keen on is the way this whole thing handles the difficulty mode. Cruelty Squad's approach to the difficulty modes is just cumbersome, but not to mention confusing. Basically, whenever you begin the game, you're on the default difficulty called Divine Light. But if you die a single time, it drops you down a notch to the next one called Flesh Automaton. Die another four times on the same level, which is quite possible, and in an act of incredible patronization, the game drops you down again to easy mode. Now this one's called Power in Misery, and the HUD changes to what looks like a stretched out ball sack. Never mind the lore behind what it means to be in this difficulty mode, because that's opening a whole other can of worms. What's most important though is that now enemies do less damage than they did before, making the whole thing considerably easier. The easiest way to bump up the mode again is to find and activate these Divine Light Shrines, of which I think there's maybe two in the entire game. One of which is on the last level, and another which is hidden in the tutorial stage, which you can only access if you change the game's resolution to its lowest setting. Yep, you've got to change your resolution down to 640x480, which for some reason opens up a secret room housing the shrine. And all I'm wondering at this point is how the dev ever thought someone could figure that out on their own. Then to access the secret hardest difficulty mode, you can again only activate this at two hidden shrines. Again, one hidden on the final level and one in the tutorial. There's hidden doors that only open if you're playing on certain difficulty modes and another hidden mode called death mode that can only be switched on if you're playing on the highest difficulty and then manage to find and interact with an NPC who, lo and behold, is also hidden. I mean, I've seen episodes of Twin Peaks that have made more sense than this shit. There was a fish in the percolator. And I know on some kind of narrative level that that's the point of why these difficulty modes exist. But on the other hand, I also like being able to just pick a difficulty mode and then stick it out until I beat it. Having to go through this whole rigmarole every time I want to change the difficulty is just a nuisance. And it's one of the few things in the game I think is too obscure for its own good. Still, I guess on some level these kind of things is part of what's made Cruelty Squad so charming for some people. The amount of these weird obscure mechanics that make the storyline in a David Lynch film seem sensical in comparison. 
Let's not mince words though, there's still a whole heap of bullshit in this thing. Death often comes quick and fast, and while that's a big factor for how the game plays, and does work well into its whole trial and error format, it's also often completely unfair when it happens. The way the game tries to escalate the difficulty in later missions is just by giving enemies more powerful weapons, which allows them to shred you before you're even where you're being shot at. Punishment mode ups this even more, doubling the damage enemies do, at which point it turns into like a tactical shooter, and you've got to start peeking around every corner. Trying to see the difference between enemies with guns and just normal NPCs is also really hard in some of these missions. Enemies with weapons are going to run towards you as opposed to the NPCs who just kind of scatter around like moss stuck in a light bulb. The final mission in the game is also absolutely fucking awful, because there's really only one route you can take to finish it. In a game that's all about experimentation and exploring your options, there's only one way through this thing, and it just features some really cheap enemies along the way. Not to mention the final boss is fought in this arena that looks like a Windows 95 screensaver in motion, and the whole thing just made me want to vomit. But look, Cruelty Squad was never pretending to be a masterpiece, nor does it really seem to want to. It does succeed at being one of the most unique games I've played in recent memory, and I think mechanically it manages to be just enough jank to get by without feeling like complete rubbish. Also, any game that lets you kill someone by throwing an exploding toilet at them is okay in my books. Thank <laughs> you.